All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, got to give a big shout out to the sponsors as always. Sovereign Extracts, putting out great CBD oils, as well as a variety of THC, CBD, and hybrid cartridges. Also, a big shout out to USG Canada, putting out great apparel for boxers, MMA fighters, and for fans alike. We've got a big event going. It's happening in Wyoming. It's going down on November the 7th, and it is part of WLC. We've got Dave LaDuke and Cyrus Washington going at it, and I mean... Dave LaDuke describing it as the most important fight of his career. Definitely a bold claim from the King of Lethway. And I've got Dave on the show right now. How's your day going so far there, Dave? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Yeah, it's great to be able to talk to you and stuff like that. And I'm I'm noticing that you're, you know, defending the open weight title under traditional rules and stuff like that. So, like, how excited are you to be able to bring the full-on traditional rules to, like, a domestic audience that maybe hasn't seen Lethway before? Yeah, good question. So um, basically, it's still uh, you know people are still uh, have uh, questions about the, about the uh, about the sport. So it's it's um, it's a very uh, very old ancient martial art, about over two thousand years old, and uh, it's you know booming right now. So it's exciting to uh, and people are, are messaging me every day about with questions and about you know like you said the traditional rules. What's the difference between the WLC rules? Um, so basically, you know, I'm signed with the WLC. It's the it's a promotion in Myanmar. Uh, Who's planning to was planning to do events in everywhere, but with the the whole situation with the COVID, they had to put an alt on this, and I'm still you know exclusively signed with them, and that's the that's the thing. So uh, because of the travel restrictions. I was legally allowed to, you know, go fight anywhere else around the world during that time. So it's kind of a, a, a big coincidence that because uh, uh, I hold two championship, the WLC championship and uh, traditional rules in uh, in Myanmar. And uh, basically, uh, for those who don't know the the difference of the rules, uh, traditional Lithuanian rules, it's you know everything allowed. Basically, headbutts allowed, no gloves, KO to win. That's the big difference. Meaning that if there's no there's no knockout at the end of, of the fight of five rounds uh the fight will be scored a draw so it doesn't matter if you, you know you, you 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 bloody you dominate your opponent it doesn't matter it will if the two mans are standing it's going to be a draw and uh that's uh, very exciting for people because like there's no bias uh, decision like we see sometimes in mma it's like oh i thought he won but it was a split decision well that's just like last man standing and uh i did most of my fights like this and I did uh, my last fight in 2019 in the WLC rule set, which is tournament rule set, which is was established in like 1996 in Myanmar uh, to have a clear winner at the end of a bout. And uh, so, yeah, basically, just to clear it out, so uh, the WLC uh, is uh, not KO to win. It's uh, it has the uh, the decision at the end of the fight. So if it wasn't for the COVID, which I hate right now, I was not going to be. I, w- I would not be able to uh, to defend my other title, which is traditional rules. If that makes sense. Yeah, I understand the distinction that you're laying out there, man, for sure. But I'm kind of wondering what your thoughts are on this rematch because it seems like one that's very much important to you. Like your career arc has been a curious one because the first couple bouts you faced off against like just some legends of the sport to say the very least but this fight there seems to be the stake of we fought me and cyrus in 2017 in myanmar and uh i was still a fairly new champion uh, and uh i had over you know around 20 25 fights and he had over 100 110 so um he was uh, very experienced but i i heard him early with a knee in the clinch and I like I lacerated his face, uh, and as, after that he was like avoiding engagement to to, to avoid further damage. And uh, he's like he was he's been saying since he's like oh man uh, I I know how to beat you. It's just you you, uh, you got lucky with that knee and stuff like that. And I studied you. I know how to beat. I'm like really. They all say that. You know you can say all you want, but when we're standing in the cage in the ring, well uh, it's a different story. And me ever since that fight, I've been extremely pissed and critical of myself because of the way I was not controlling the ring. He was he was running away from me and I was not cutting the ring. So I was basically running after him like a zombie and I'm very pissed at this. And I wanted to, I can swear? Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, can, okay. I wanted to fucking knock him out and uh, uh, he, he ended up surviving the, the entire five rounds. So it ended up as a draw. So like the other day I looked on Wikipedia just for fun and I saw, yeah, it's a draw, but like, I was I was untouched. Like I really dominated. So I'm pissed. I want to knock him out. I want to clear clear. Fit. I want to make a statement for this because 
if people don't know the, the entire story about this, we're, we're talking, you know, Myanmar is 55 million people there, and it's like a religion there. Like, it's like hockey for Canadians, or, you know, uh, it, it's a big deal. So, and uh, if you're, uh, you know, the, the only two foreigners that made an impact in Litwe is me and Cyrus, uh, having stopped uh, Tun Tun Min, who is a knockout artists like crazy and I, I fought him three times Cyrus fought him three times as well and uh, I, I'm this fight is for my legacy because I want to I want to be remembered as the best non-Burmese let's with fighter in history and and like Cyrus is the only thing like it's the only like asterisk in the oh yeah yeah they did good Cyrus also, also stopped him to men we know as uh, I have to give him hats off to him a nice spinning kick but I'm a different breed man like I'm the new generation yeah, well, I mean, to that point, it seems like a very high-stakes fight, like you said, is to determine the, you know, best foreign practitioner of Lethway. But with this being in Wyoming, like, do you foresee there being some kind of, like, residual growth of the sport in North America? Like, is that the ideal hope, to have, like, more competitors from over here kind of, like, decide to take part in such a great martial art that has thousands of years of history behind it? Well said. Yes, absolutely. I think it's... Uh... All the stars are aligned for a massive growth, you know, with WLC. I um, basically, uh, we work with them to get in on UFC Fight Pass. So that was a big move for Litway. And that was like very cool to have a very old martial art on a modern platform. It's kind of ironic. It was kind of cool to live that. And um, yeah, if you look at this right now, what's happening in Lit Lit the Litway world right now, there's, um, you know, a world championship, amateur world championship happening in Poland next year in Warsaw, which like all the teams around the world have like are building national teams to be able to compete there. So we're basically Litway is getting organized to get like the new generation of fighters training and, and, and uh, like Muay Thai gyms are converting into Litway and adding Litway, you know, to their curriculum. Uh, I have also schools, uh, and I have a school in, in uh, an affiliated school in Iceland, one in, in, in California, New York, and, and, and Texas, Austin, Texas. Uh, it's, so it's booming right now. But as for the fight, it was, it could not happen in a be better timing, um, Dylan, because like everybody's like bored at home, and uh, I don't know, I'm like in Canada, like everybody's confined, and it's, so it's like going to be all eyes on this and. Because uh, I think, you know, not a lot of other promotions are making fights right now, so that's cool. But as for, like, what's going to do on Litway, where we're, we're talking, like, this is the first Litway world title fight on U.S. soil. So the sky's the limit after that. Yes, I think it's going to grow. Uh, it's going to, uh, like, I think it's a bold move from Sparta promotion to, to hold that fight. I think it's a, it's a very uh, bold move, but also a, a high risk, high reward. And, you know, it's expensive, but uh, they're going to be reminded. They're going to be remembered as you know the, the the promotion that that the first one to host the Litwe title fight, world title fight on U.S. soil. So it's uh, it's pretty fucking exciting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, penning their place in the history books. But you know, speaking of books, it seems like an autobiography is in the works for you there, the King of Lethway, and just the contracts seem to be signed and everything like that. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit and just how the process is for putting something like that together has gone? Yeah, so I, I've been, uh, a lot of my, my, my I call it my Lethway army, my people, they say, oh, we want, we want to know the stories of how you ended up in Myanmar, you know, uh, so, you know I, I started in, uh, I was in Thailand because I was, I was waiting to get my shot in Lithuania. And then I fought in prison fights, and then I got... So it's like, a, it's a big, big uh, story behind it, how it happened. My dream was always to fight Litwe. Some people, you know, thought that I I, uh, I, I started Muay Thai, then I got tired of it. And no, I never, I, don't, I never liked Muay Thai. I just wanted, I just went there because my friends were uh, were there, and uh, it was easier to get fights, get ring experience. And But ever, ever since I saw, like, Black Belt magazine back in the days, in my teenage... I knew I saw a Burmese article, a Burmese Lithuanian article. I'm like, fuck, I want to do this. You know, I always like to be the black sheep. I always like to be different, and it, I didn't want to be like everybody else. And Lithuanian was definitely the thing that was gonna stand me apart. And uh, and uh, but it, it's it's uh, it's yeah, it's gonna be a, a, a. I think we're gonna call it something like scoop. We're gonna call it like the, the rise of Lithuanian because before we started, before I before I, I transitioned to this. Not a lot of people knew Litwe. Uh, actually, people didn't even know Myanmar. So, do you think they knew their national sport? You know, it's it's it was completely, it was very niche. And now we're you know we're fighting U.S. World. Or I'm helping their world championship in in Poland. We have the the the, the UFC fight. Like it's just blowing up from everywhere. I went on Joe Rogan last year. So um, 
it's uh it's very cool i'm talking with bass Rutten, like uh, the other day to to have a to make a, a show a tv show with like you know let's show so it's uh it's very cool what's happening and yes the 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 book is in the works i'm talking with tom taylor he's a he's a, a great uh, writer he works for you know bg pen uh, south china morning post so he's uh he's gonna be a I, li- I like the way he writes so i think we're gonna have a good team yeah, for sure. And kind of just going back to something you mentioned earlier, because you were saying that Sparta is kind of handling this. And in your WLC contract, there is an act of God clause that, you know, if something, you know, unforeseen happens like this pandemic, you can fight under a different banner. So is all of that why you're fighting under what is ultimately a different banner than WLC here? Like, I mean, it still seems like it's part of the lineage of Lethway and everything like that, but slightly different banner because of that contractual clause there. Is that a is that an accurate understanding of what's going on here? Exactly, it's exactly the force majeure, the act of God clause, because it's it's you know they, they're supposed to give me a, a certain amount of fights per year, and I'm supposed to fight a certain amount of fights per year, but because they you know they can't fly me to Myanmar, they can't fly my opponents to Myanmar or uh, anywhere. It's just it's just a mess right now. So it's just like an understanding that. Uh, uh, I'm able to fight, but obviously I'm not defending the WLC title. I'm 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 defending my traditional title, which I I um, I uh, I still hold. So it's it, I'm very I'm very happy because um, otherwise I, I get like I said earlier I was I would not be able to defend it, and that would that's something I I hold uh, dear in my heart. This title, uh, the golden belt, we call it. There's only one golden belt. It's not like you know in MMA there's like different promotion in traditional let's say, There's one golden belt for each weight categories, and um, the old Open weight, which is you're supposed to accept challenge from everybody. Like I've, I'm, I'm 175 pounds, and I fought you know guys 200 and something pounds. I, I have to, but otherwise I'm gonna get stripped. So uh, uh, it's just it's uh, it's hard to get, to find. A lot of guys say oh, I want to fight, I want to fight, but when it's time to sign the dotted lines, and you know you see the you see the rule set with the the the, the kill to win, the headbutts, everything is like oh shit. And a lot of guys uh, I don't hear about them anymore. So it's. Um, it's uh yeah it's de- it's definitely a, a, a massive uh, a, ma- a very important step for for the for the history of Lithuania to um, to uh, for this fight yeah traditional Lithuanian rules in a cage too by the way that's gonna that's gonna change a lot of things in the clinch I think yeah and I mean like perfect timing that was actually gonna be my you know follow up question because obviously you're familiar with MMA you've competed a few times in that sport but never in Lithuania like do you foresee that as like is this an exciting proposition for you like does it seem like familiar but in a way kind of new like how would you characterize Lethway in a cage and getting to compete there yeah it's it's a very good question um basically i'm um i'm training a lot and i'm training in canada right now because I'm, I'm kind of stuck here i went here to buy property and we got stuck in in canada but i that's where my my coach from day one is here and um you know, we have a cage at the gym. I, I train with uh, a lot of uh, a lot of my uh, my training partners are uh, uh, you know from TKO or uh, UFC. So I, like I'm training with them, helping them for their fights uh, as well. But now they're now we're training for my fight in the cage. Um, I train you know I am I train on my ground all the time. So I'm I'm trained MMA all the time. This is uh, it's my first love. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna change a lot. I think it's gonna we're, the way we're training right now. I think it's going to change a lot the inside game because uh, I fought a lot of guys and when when I was getting the best of them in the, in the in the ring, right? They were bending over the ropes or they were bent, they were bending uh, from the back. They were hiding. It's very uh, malleable the ring. While in the cl- in the cage, it's like once you're pinned to the cage, you, the headbutt's going to fly, the, the elbow, like, and there's no recoil. Like you're stuck there. So uh, I think it's going to be. Very exciting, and and if, if I look at Litway in a cage, it's been only done in Austria in 2008 from another Litway uh, at a smaller weight. It was done from another Litway legend in uh, in 2008 in Austria, and uh, it was pretty cool to see to see Litway in a cage. So, but it was not uh, it was not very uh, it was not accessible. Now people are going to be able to watch it around the world on pay per view. Yeah, and you mentioned getting in some work with like those guys at the at the gym from you know the early goings and stuff like that, like Pat Node martial arts and whatnot. Guys like you know Sifu Patrick Marcel and whatnot, and some of the guys there. Like I mean, like Mark Andre Burial kicking it there, and it just seems like also like you've inspired certain guys too with the you know Lethway involvement too. Like I understand Serge Donkos is interested in further competition in that realm. So I mean, it's good to see, man. It's a far cry from at one point like people kind of like watching you you know, headbutt the pads and stuff like that. And like, what's Dave doing over there? 
<laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Everybody's super excited, and uh, uh, you know, I was actually I was uh, the main training partner for Marc Andre in his last fight. He actually um, he, he won his last fight in, in Vegas, and uh, we trained hard like on on different attacks and and the same as you know same the, the, just the I like I like the. Um, I like the, to have this like me, different mentalities from different people, and it's uh, it's for sure uh, helping the game. Yeah, and it seems like just preparing the neck is like a big part in what you're doing too. Like just different like weightlifting exercises centric to yeah. that. Like how important do you feel like that's an underutilized training aspect of you know like what certain fighters are bringing to the table? Like maybe not like honing on that aspect. That seems oh like god. something you're looking at a fair bit. Oh my god, that's such a good good point. I've only seen this like uh, in boxing. A lot of guys do it in boxing. Uh, I'm I don't like when I was training at Tiger Muay Thai in, in a couple of years ago. Uh, I was the only guy li staying at the end of the I was only the only guy staying at the end and doing my neck and I, I make a point to do it like every day or every second day uh, I think it's something that we, we we take for granted but it's you know when we say the, the glass jaw or the or the or a solid jaw it's not the jaw it's the neck you know so it's really the neck that absorbs all the impact so definitely to answer your question it's uh, a big game changer I, uh, I I always say you know my 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 knockout resistance is my last line of defense. Like my neck is my last line of defense. First, you want to be evasive. You want you don't want to get touched, especially in lit way, because one one jab, one cross, you can get cut. You can draw blood. So I really take a lot of pride in not you know try to be evasive and not being touched. Um, but if it happens, well, yes, you know we're ready. We we can take a shot. I've taken I've taken my my uh, my uh, my amount. I, I took some good shots in my career and. Uh, uh, I've never had to use my uh, my injury timeout in Lithu in traditional Lithuania, which is uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, and it really changes up a lot of the facets of the game, like especially like the guard. Even like it seems like you have to have like your lead hand pretty much extended out there as like a means of not only gauging range but preventing your opponent from headbutting you. So it seems like a lot of facets of the striking game get changed when the headbutts become part of the rule set there. Yeah, I think it's something that people start to understand that Latoya is the is the uh, the epitome of striking. It's the ultimate test for strikers. I I take and I say it very very confidently. You cannot claim that you're the best striker in the world unless you've done it without gloves, without the wrist support of a glove, and with the threat of headbutts or uh, without the scoring system. Of, of you know because it changes the game you you don't kick as much when you have a weapons in your hands that can cut or you have a weapon in your head that can cut like you're looking for damage and a lot of times in muay thai the guys are like pacing themselves and they don't you know a lot of times it ends in the, in the decision or something because it's all about scoring uh, an intricate scoring system uh, and in the traditional let's way well, it's all about uh, inflicting maximum damage and uh, definitely changes especially the inside game once you're inside um it's you know a lot of times I because I, I train with kickboxers, Muay Thai fighters, all the all the thing, and when we're holding the hands in the clinch, well, there's there's you know both hands on the bicep, for example. Well, in the middle, there's another weapon here in Lithuania, which is a completely you have to be aware. So your clinch is different. Your 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 spatial you know uh, control has to be different because you. I, that's why I use a lot of my you know push kick and 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 make sure that I control the pace of the fight and I decide when I come inside. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it seems like you've been working on the penetration step a fair bit with the shot sled, so I imagine that's really going to come through in this one here. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a lot of good things uh, prepared in my pocket for this. Like I said, on November 7, I need a clear, clear decision. Uh, a clear, um, I need a clear statement, and uh, this is not going five rounds. And But to be honest, there's actually a clause in, to make sure that it, the only outcome is a KO. There's a clause in the contract that... If after five rounds there's no knockout, we can go two extra rounds. That's like old school. We call that Lithuania extreme. That's like never happens. It happens a couple of times in, in the history of Lithuania. It's like uh, you can go like seven rounds per knuckle. Well, that's an intriguing proposition. I guess we'll see how the story of the fight unfurls in that regard. But I'm kind of yeah, curious about the... I don't plan, I don't plan to go there because, you know, my Sifu always told me, he's yeah, like, yeah. you don't get paid for uh, the amount of rounds you fight, you know, and the more you fight, the more you're going to get a chance to get hurt. So let's finish it early. 
Yeah, well, based on your fighting style, you definitely seem a big fan of, you know, getting in and getting out. But I kind of wanted to ask about the, I guess, fanfare surrounding you in Myanmar, because early on in the conversation, I'd mentioned that you fought like a couple legends of Lethway when you got in there. And maybe there was a bit of a divisive kind of dynamic with you, but it seems like you've really just endeared yourself to a lot of the people out in Myanmar, and they seem really inspired by you and just inspiring like that next generation of Lethway. So can you kind of speak about that timeline and just like the drastic changes and changes in sentiment that have occurred there? Well, that's a very good question. Technically, uh, it, I was I was very surprised, but you know, for people to understand, like I've traveled all around the world and, and Myanmar people, the Burmese people are some of the kindest, most humble and like, and, and genuine people I've like, it's crazy. They're so kind and, um, and they're uh, very accepting of, of, of uh, everybody, you know, like uh, in, um, in, the, in the Myanmar, like downtown in Yangon, the, the, the biggest city in Myanmar, there's in one, like uh, half a mile uh, kil- uh, square square mile, like let's say, uh, I don't know, you're in the States, right? In, I'm in kilometers. So let's <laughs> say in a, in a miles, in a square mile <laughs> radius in, in Yangon, there is like a church, an Hindu temple, a synagogue, uh, um, a mosque. There's all of them in, like it's very, they live, you know, they live in all different types of, uh, of uh, ideologies. And uh, I was actually afraid when I came in. My first Latvia fight, I fought uh, Tutu, who was the, uh, he was the undefeated 36-0 and in Latvia, uh, 75 kg champion, like 170, 65 pounds. And um, I dominated him. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then I was like, at first they were a bit like, who the fuck is that guy? You know, they, <laughs> it was a bit, uh, a bit of booing and a bit of stuff. And then I, I then I challenged Tun Tun Min, who is the open weight champion. And then we fought, uh, you know, two times. And then I I, uh, I won the belt from him. But I quickly they quickly realized that I wasn't there to just you know take the belt and leave and just like uh, and go back to Canada and just be uh, you know I, I actually I the reason and that's a good point uh, I want, that's a great question because the reason why I really felt compelled to like to stay there i actually live there uh, i have i still have a uh, place there when i come but like the reason why i feel there and it's very simple it's because in canada we used to be a, a people of very you know hard like braving uh, cold winters and very you know very strong uh, but nowadays it's like ah uh, no the new the new kids they have a hard time like um tying their shoes or something but in, and and the the fighting spirit is kind of gone and uh i'm i'm uh, i think i'm kind i'm kind outside of the ring but then when i'm inside i want to be i want to mean business right and that's what i saw in Myanmar, and i really relate to them and i said okay look they're super kind but then when they're when they're in the ring, well, they're fucking brutal, and they're the inventor of Litway. So I was like, it's contrast, and I'm a guy of contrast as well. So um, I really already, I right away clicked. I'm like, okay, this is my people, and I joke often in, in our interviews in Burmese. I'm like, if there's such thing as another life, I was uh, I was probably born in Myanmar. <laughs> Well, that's a beautiful thing. It shows your connectivity with the people and stuff like that. And it, it's great that they were, yeah, they adopted you into their home and stuff like that. So it's great that you all have that. That's a cool connection, man. It's really interesting to see. The, uh, and just to, to add on to this, um, basically, the, uh, the, not, only, not only that they accepted, like, the, it's, it's, this is my second, my third let's with fight. The promoter said, you know, if you win the fight, if you win the belt, the golden belt, we're going to pay your wedding. So I'm like a lot of pressure. I work well under pressure, uh, and then uh, I got it. So we got we got married live on television. You know, live on on national TV it was the whole country was watching. And still nowadays, when I go in the streets, the, um, the I see some people showing me their screensaver, their their their, their background on their cell phones, and it's like a picture of me and my wife uh, at our wedding. <laughs> so it's like okay, we it was pretty it's pretty special. Yeah, that's a wild thing to think about. I mean, like, people are getting tattoos of you now and stuff like that. And also, you're in movies now and stuff like that. Like, you get to play the main gangster in Underground. So, some cool stuff happening, man. Excuse me, I didn't catch what you the last sentence. Oh, I'm just saying you got to play the main gangster in that Underground movie there, so. Yes, exactly. That was that was the first movie, and I actually uh, had to learn some some lines in Burmese. I'm still learning. I'm not fluent yet, but uh, yeah, that's that that was cool. There was actually a fighting scene in that movie. It's gonna come. It's gonna only come out in Myanmar though. But I'll I'll send you some some uh, some links for sure. And, and but yeah, it was a fighting scene which uh, I, I uh, they said we have to do some headbutt. So like I I beat up a, like a, a couple gangsters and I fucked them up with headbutt. <laughs> and it was pretty cool. <laughs>
Oh, that's awesome, man. And I mean, I want to be mindful of your time and everything. But before we're kind of wrapping up here, I wanted to ask about the scared animal mentality, something your coach, Sifu Patrick Marcel has instilled in you a lot growing up. Like, can you kind of speak about that a little bit and like how that, I guess, rounds out your technique and your overall game? Well, well said. Yeah, it's something I I, uh, I don't talk often because uh, it's not for everybody. Not everybody understands that, you know. Like it's it's kind of like another world. Well, um, I always say like before a fight, if you're not afraid, well, you're not in the right place. You're either gonna get killed or you're completely delusional. Like the the other guy wants to hurt you. He wants to humiliate you. He wants to like make you bloody you want to concuss you he wants to it's like he wants to lead you in front of everybody and, and especially if you're a champion he wants you want to take away your status you want to take away your 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 the income that comes with that status you want to take everything and uh, if that doesn't piss you off well like i don't know what to say you know like for me it pisses me off and it's, it also scares me you know, the guy wants to, you know there's a chance he can hurt me so this fear for me I think it's the same for business or anything like uh, dating. If you want to approach a girl that you like, like anything like that, fear makes you more aware. Like especially like like an animal, like fear makes my eyesight better. It makes uh, my smells, my my earring. Like it's like a, you're going you know hunting basically. And when I when I go uh, when I go fight, I uh, I always remember when my sifu said. Be like a scared animal because if you, if me and you were, for example, we're walking on the street and we see a, a, like an injured dog on the floor, the dog, even if you you have all the best intention of your life, you know, you try to help him, his his, his paw is broken or something, his leg is broken, he still doesn't care. He's in survival mode. He's afraid. He wants to fucking bite you. He wants to hurt you. Like get away from me. I'm I'm hurt. Get away from me. You know, and um, I try to do the same thing as before a fight. I'm I'm thinking, okay. A scared animal is, first of all, very unpredictable. That dog would be very unpredictable. You never know. He's going to bite you. He's going to jump on you. You know, so I, I, uh, and being unpredictable in fighting is good. So I, I'm, I'm uh, always thinking like a scared animal being very aware, very, very alert, very ready to, uh, to explode when it, when the time comes. I'm not the, I'm not the guy that, you know, uh, to be jumping around like crazy. I'm stalking my opponent like a shark. And when I see the opening, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, that was well articulated. I definitely understand the dynamic you were talking about where maybe not for everybody, but you know, definitely works for you and makes you hyper aware. So I definitely get that. But you've also been really great with your time and I want to be mindful of that for sure. So is there anything you want to add? As a for sure. And uh, yeah, because yeah, I like your questions. It makes uh, it's very good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great talking to you, man. And I was glad that we were able to you know, get this interview going and stuff like that. I kind of wanted to talk about, actually now that you say that, I was curious about the whole prison fight kind of dynamic there like when did that idea first get pitched to you and stuff like that like obviously it ended up working out well for you and kind of got you on a lot of people's radars there but that seems like an interesting idea to get pitched to somebody like were you a little taken aback initially so i saw that i saw on vice on youtube i saw vice the uh, documentary and i saw that i was like oh my god that's cool and again the same mentality of being you know black sheep being different that was like that was definitely something nobody hears about and uh, nobody sees and in fact since my fight in 2014 they didn't even host an event yet and uh, side note i am actually looking now to host a prison fight in myanmar i'm look, uh, so with little rules think about that so because oh, okay. when i fought this uh, prison fight was under Muay Thai rules. Uh, I did not. I, I hadn't hadn't done my transition to Litwe yet, and uh, I got. Um, I actually find a way to reach out to to the organizers, uh, Russian guys, in partnership with the uh, Thai Department of Correction. And the thing that really made me excited about this is that the, the history. Like, if you if you if the prisoner beats you, he gets the sentence reduced. So it's like, holy shit, they're fighting for their freedom. And funny enough, the name of the event was Fight for Freedom. Oh, yeah. So, they're, they're, yeah, it's Fight for Freedom. <laughs> I still have the gloves and the hat and everything. It's all like Fight for Freedom. And they're literally fighting for their freedom. They're getting some money, obviously. And funny enough, I actually, uh, I, I came out at a newspaper in Canada recently. I said, like, I, I never got paid for that fight. I actually paid a couple thousand dollars to go there. So that's how it just tells you sometimes that sacrifices sometimes need are needed to catapult you, you know, where you want to be. But yeah, I actually paid like three thousand dollars flights and hotels and food just to be able to go to ba like uh, Bangkok and to uh, to fight that prisoner. And um, 
And uh, yeah, all, I actually was one of my good friends, Anwar Brozanarov. He's fighting for glory. And uh, he, uh, he actually beat up uh, Pavio Pinka the, uh, in glory the, uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, But yeah, we were, we were there at the time. And uh, actually, yeah, he lost on points in a boxing match. Most of most foreigners that were there lost, on, lost either by knockout or by points. And uh, me and another guy won. So out of like 14 fights or something, we uh, only two guys won. And... Uh, yeah, my guy was there for tra uh, drug trafficking, methamphetamine, meth, and uh, he was there for many, many years. And uh, fortunately for me, he <laughs> well, I don't because people said like, why don't you let him win? You know, like you know, you're out. He's gonna get two years off his sentence. I'm like, I don't give a shit. It's yeah. my career at stake here. Like, I I have to feed myself. I have to to raise my name. I have to raise my profile. So fuck that. You know what I mean? And uh, so that was a very very intense moment. I spoke about it on Joe Rogan. I said, you come inside that prison yard. All the people. It's a maximum security prison. All the guys looking at you. They want to stab you. <laughs> they they look like they're 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 not like. Uh, they're not like very kind guys sometimes, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a definitely a very memorable experience. I'm gonna talk about it in the book. Yeah, for sure. And I'm kind of curious about the dynamics at play here because there seems to have been some level of flirtation with one championship. Like Chatri Sityatong is intrigued to bring you in and have like a full on Lethway competition there. And like we mentioned, the previous clause in the WLC contract there would that clause be something that comes into an effect? Would WLC just loan you to one championship would it have to be like a co-promotional deal or what do you what do you think about that good question i'm um i'm not sure because obviously like the wlc uh, i want to defend my title that i'm, I'm i want to fight let um if one fc i'm not sure if they want to do let's one day there they had been talks for sure too because there's already a lot of you, uh, WLC guys are are fighting in one FC as well. You know, Sasha Moza, uh, not you Vietnamese, Nung Tang Nat. There's a lot of uh, a lot of trans, a lot of guys fighting in both promotions. Um, my position is a bit different, uh, but uh, definitely. But to be honest, I would actually be excited to uh, to go fight MMA in one to uh, to go back to it one day. So that's something I still I'm still sour about. Because I was very young and very inexperienced when I when I accepted big challenges uh, at the time, so I still want to avenge my uh, my my MMA loss. And uh, but yeah, I'm um, I think uh, for Litway, for now it's looking uh, it's looking I'm going to defend. But the next step would be defending my WC belt. And uh, if uh, if the if something yeah, because I'm speaking with Shetri often, and uh, we get along very well. And uh, he loves Litway. He loves uh, he loves the the. You know, when they do a show in Myanmar with my friend Angla, Angla and San, uh, it's always uh, sold out. It's always a massive thing. So it would be it would be nice to fight uh, both both uh, both Myanmar fighters fighting on the same card. That would be nice one day. But yeah, right now, uh, I guess I'm focusing on my fight in the next in two weeks. But definitely. Definitely, there's a lot of opportunities in front of me if uh, whatever it is. And I like that one is very flexible. You know, they they actually had two Litway fights uh, as the showcase. You know, they were like showcasing Litway uh, in Myanmar. So they actually had two Litway fights in, in under one championship um, under the radar, though. But uh, just because they do that when they go to a country, right? They show Sanda, they show this, they show that. They, now they, in Myanmar, they showed Litway. Um, so definitely very attainable. You would be very open to open to do it one day. Um, but I know just to wrap it up, I know that the, he would like to have me exclusively. So, uh, maybe I could go for MMA and I don't know. It's very, very, uh, very, uh, there's still no answers for that actually. Yeah. Well, definitely a fun thing to think about a little bit, but yeah, I mean, to your yeah. point, like a lot of people are focused on this fight that you have coming up a huge rematch with Cyrus Washington and yeah, just a great fight that I'm very much looking forward to as well. So I'm kind of curious, is there anything you want to perhaps add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping things up here, Dave? Yeah, basically, like I said, I want to, uh, to avenge my, uh, my, not, I was not avenge, but I want to, I want to, I'm very critical of my last performance against him. I was, um, I, I, I rewatched the fight and uh, I was uh, I was I could have finished him I didn't and now in the history book it's gonna be the first fight was a draw but I wanted the history book the next one is gonna be a knockout for me and uh, I, I have uh, I have a game plan that I plan with my Sifu my Sifu, and uh, we're uh, we're ready we're we're two weeks and a half away from the fight I'm I could go fight right now I'm. Uh, 
I'm very confident, and I know he's confident too. I know he he, he thinks you know he has the tools to to beat me. Perfect. I want him at his best. He said he's feeling stronger than ever. Perfect. Uh, obviously, he, he he has way more experience than me. Uh, he has I think six lightweight fights. I have more fights than him in lightweight, but he has 120 something total fights in kickboxing, and you know he he he, um, he fought you know to a decision with uh, Cosmo Alexander. Uh, he fought Nikki Holston, fought uh, Yi Long, the Japanese, the, the Shaolin monk, uh, to a decision. And so it's just like he, the guy fought around the world. He, he's, uh, he, you know, he's he's ready, and uh, I'm ready too. So.